Hey guys, this is Johnny and in this video I'm gonna make some weapon changing mechanism with a radial menu and mouse scroll. I'm just gonna use the rifle and a pistol in this project, but this system can be used for as many weapons as we want. But before I do that, I'm gonna fix some of the bugs I found. You can see when running, the animation doesn't properly blend when going to the crouching state. This is because the transition should be a little slower when going from running to crouching state. You can also see, spamming the crouch button gives weird behavior. We can fix this by creating a delay so that we can spam the crouch button. Also the crouch button should be turned off while rolling, otherwise pressing them together gives a buggy animation. Another thing is, when jumping from crouch state, the player should go to the standing state instead of crouching state. So to fix the spamming issue, I'm gonna create a timer and call it crouch timer. And give it a little delay. This is going to be the spam delay for crouch. In the code, if the timer is stopped and the roll is not active, I'm gonna start the timer and put these lines inside here. So now there will be a spam delay and we cannot change the stance while rolling. I'm also gonna access the CS transition node inside the animation tree and change the crossfade time. The crossfade time can be accessed simply like this or with the functions which can be found in the docs of the animation node transition. So I'm gonna create a function of velocity length and assign it to the crossfade time. So when the velocity is high, which means running, going to the crouching state will be slightly slower. And here when the player is jumping, I'm simply gonna set the crouch stand target to 1 and set the CS transition to 1. So after the jump, the player will go to the standing state. So now you can see there is a delay when spamming the crouch button. Also the transition feels more natural as going from running to crouching is slower than going from crouching to running. Of course the values can be changed to get more precision. You can also see jumping from crouching state takes the player to the standing state which is what I want right now. So to make a weapon changing system, I created a pistol using Blender and exported it inside the project folder using GLTF export. I also created new animations for the player. So I'm gonna duplicate this rifle node and rename it as pistol. And here I'm gonna drag and drop the pistol model and rescale it to match the animations. In the animation tree, I'm gonna delete this aim rifle animation and create a blend space 1D here and call it weapon change aim. I'm gonna set the lower bound as 0 and keep the upper bound 1. On position 0, I'm gonna add the rifle aim animation and on position 1, I'm gonna add the pistol aim animation. I'm gonna connect this here and I'm gonna do the same thing with on air. I'm gonna set the lower bound to 0 and on air rifle animation on position 0 and on air pistol animation on position 1. Same thing will happen with the idle and rifle animations. So now all of the weapon animations are in blend space where 0 stands for rifle animations and 1 stands for pistol animations. If we have more weapons we can increase the upper bounds and keep each animations on every integer positions. This way we can create an array in the code and define 0 for rifle and 1 for pistol and so on. Which we can later use to build different weapon stats and audio and visual effects for each of the weapons. Here I'm gonna create a one shot node and add the reload animation. We're gonna need a time scale to control the animation speed which will be a part of the weapon stats. I'm gonna enable filtering and enable all the bones from shoulder to hands. You can see the pistol animations are blending nicely with the body animations. Also, I've created only one reload animation, but different reload animations can be used in a similar way with Blend Space 1D. I created some UI using Inkscape for the radial menu, using the pattern along path effect. I'm gonna use this blue shape as button and position the buttons in a way that it looks like this circular shape. I also created some icons for rifle and pistol. I'm gonna hide the status node and add a new control node here, which I'm gonna call radial menu. I'm gonna make it full rect so it covers the whole screen. I'm gonna create a panel and do the same. I'll add a style box flag to the panel and make it black with some transparency. Then I'm gonna create another control node and call it circle. I'm gonna align it to the center of the screen. I'm gonna create another control and name it zero, and here I'm gonna add a texture button. I'll set the textures for the button and also a bitmap click mask which I created from the blue texture using the bitmap export from Krita. I'm gonna align the texture button as center bottom 
and I'm gonna save this as a separate scene and call it radial menu item. I'm gonna scale down the parent node to zero and realign it here. So I'm gonna duplicate this node and rotate this holding the control button to enable snapping. I'm gonna create total six buttons like this and in here I'm just gonna move this up a little. Which will make the buttons look like a radial menu. So I'm gonna create another control node to store the icons and scale it to zero and it's already centered because of the parent node. And I'm gonna add some sprite nodes for rifle and pistol icons. I'm gonna manually position them accordingly. So you can see this is the node name zero and this is one and so on. This will also come in handy in the code. I'm gonna comment this line in the camera script so we can see the mouse pointer. If I run this, you can see the menu is centered, but it's not scaling. To fix that, I'm gonna make the stretch mode to 2D and the aspect to expand. So now the menu is shrinking and expanding with different screen sizes. The radial menu can work in three ways. It can work as an overlay on the screen without pausing the game or it can pause the entire game which can be seen in stealth games like Hitman. And it can create a slow motion effect or fade into pause. So now I'm going to create an input for the radial menu which is the G key on the keyboard. I'm going to uncomment this line from before and here on the radial menu node I'm going to attach a new script. I'm going to reference the cam root node with this cam variable here and hide this node in the ready function. And for now I'm simply going to show this node when the radial menu button is pressed and hide it when it's released. I'm also going to turn off the input processing in the camera script when the radial menu is active so that the camera doesn't receive input. So this way the camera would keep its momentum a little bit. I'm going to set the mouse visible in the radial menu mode and switch it back to captured here. So if I run this, you can see everything else is working except the camera controls. And the mouse pointer is visible and the buttons are clickable. You can also see the camera stops with a little momentum when I press the radial menu key. So now I'm going to show you how it looks when we pause the entire game while using the radial menu. To do that, I'm simply going to pause the tree and unpause it here. And we also need to set the pause mode of the radial menu to process so that this node and its children still process when the game is paused. So you see everything gets paused except the menu. This is really simple to implement, but to be honest, it doesn't feel much aesthetic for a fast paced action game. So instead of suddenly stopping everything in the game, I'm gonna create a fade in effect for pausing. So first I'm gonna create a variable called timescale target, which will be the target timescale for the engine. And I'm gonna create an interpolation variable to use when lurping. In here, I'm gonna set the timescale target to zero and interpolation to zero. And here I'm gonna set the timescale target to one. In the physics process function, I'm going to lerp the timescale of the engine towards the timescale variable and use the interpolation variable here. And here I'm going to increase the interpolation at every frame until it reaches 1. This way the engine slows down linearly instead of geometrically. Also here when we are unpausing, I'm going to instantly set the timescale to 1. I'm also going to remove these two lines. So you can see, instead of instantaneously pausing the game, we are fading into the pause, which feels much more smooth. But you see the player is still processing the inputs. But we can pause to set the physics process as false for the player because then we will lose the slow motion effect. So I'm gonna need to modify the player script a little. So in the player script, I'm gonna create a new boolean called radial menu and I'm gonna use it here so the direction vector doesn't update while we're pausing. So the player moves towards the current direction while in slow motion. I'm also gonna use it here so that aim and jump system gets disabled. I'm also going to create an animation player here and create a zoom animation and animate the scale of the circle node. This way the radial menu comes out with a zoom in animation. I'm also going to modify the easing so that it looks more pleasing to the eyes. In here, I'm going to simply play the animation. And also I'm going to access the player which is the parent of this node and set process input as false so that the input function gets disabled. And also I'm going to turn the radial menu as true. This way the player will keep moving in the current course of action when we are slowing the engine down. I'm going to make it false here when we are releasing the radial menu button. And also set this true. 
So now you can see when we slow down the engine, the player keeps moving in the current direction. And also I'm pressing all the input keys of the player and the player is not receiving the inputs. Also the radial menu comes out with a smooth zoom in animation which is much more pleasing to the eyes. So now I'm going to create a script on this node in the radial menu item scene. I'm going to rename this texture button and connect the button press signal in the script. So when we press the button, I want to turn off the radial menu. So I'm going to take all these lines and create a function called radial menu off. And call this function here and also when the menu button is pressed. I'm also going to use the buttons to change the current weapon of the player. So here in the radial menu script, I'm going to create a variable called current item and make the initial value minus 1. This value will change when we hover the mouse over a button. I'm going to use hover so that even if we don't press the button, if we press G and hover over a weapon button and release the G key, the player will still switch the weapon. So I'm going to connect the mouse entered and mouse exited signals with the radial menu item script. In the mouse entered, I'm going to access the current item variable from the radial menu node and assign the name of the current button we are hovering. I'm casting this to integer as the name is a string variable. You can see the buttons are named from 0 to 5. And in the mouse exited button, I'm going to assign the minus 1 to the variable which we would take as no weapon is selected. So if the current item is not minus 1, which means a weapon is selected, I'm going to call a function called switch weapon in the player script and pass the current item as a parameter. So in the player script, I'm going to create this function called switch weapon and take a parameter called 2 which will be the weapon the player will switch to. Here I'm going to change the blend positions of all the weapon change blend space nodes inside the animation tree, which are the four blend space nodes I described before. Here I'm going to create an array to hold the names of the weapons and a variable called the current weapon. I'm also going to change this to gun attachment and change the reference to the gun attachment node in the player skeleton and rename this accordingly. So when we are pressing the holster button, the bone attachment node will toggle its visibility. Here when the input parameter is less than the size of the weapons array, which means the weapon we want to switch to exists in the array, I'm gonna access the gun attachment node and get the node which is in the index position of the current weapon variable inside the weapons array and hide that node. In the next line, I'm gonna change the current weapon to the input parameter and here I'm gonna show the current weapon. So when the button zero is selected, we're going to switch to the rifle node and when the button 1 is selected, we're going to switch to the pistol node. I also need to call this switch weapon function when we press a button in the radial menu. So I'm going to access this function and pass the name converted to integer. So now you can see, pressing the button switches to the corresponding weapon. Also without pressing the button, if I hover over the button and release the G key, we can also switch the weapon. For the sake of traditional method, I also went ahead and created two new inputs, next weapon which is the mouse wheel down and previous weapon which is the mouse wheel up. In the input method if the next weapon input is pressed, I'm gonna switch to the next weapon in the array and if the current weapon is at the end of the array, I'm gonna switch to the beginning of the array. I'm gonna do the same with the previous weapon input but in reverse, so when we are at index 0, we go to the end of the array. To make the weapon switching look more clear, I'm going to set the reload active node as true, which is a one shot node inside the animation tree. You can have different weapon switching animation for different weapons, but for now I'm going to use the reload animation as a placeholder. So now the weapon switching works with the mouse scroll. And the reload animation plays when we switch the weapon. So we've created a radial menu with smooth pausing mechanism and we switch to different weapon with the radial menu and mouse scroll. In the next video I'm going to create some audio and visual effects and the crosshair system. So see you in the next video.